And he said, Pastor, let me tell you what I said. He said, I said I did it. He did it. He said, well, Pastor Lou said, you will have to go down and withdraw or you will have to leave. And I addressed and told him, as we have always had to say, Mr. I said, I didn't register for you. I said, I was trying to register for myself. He said, we're not ready for that in Mississippi. He wasn't ready, but I've been ready a long time. I had to leave that same night. On the 10th of September, 1962, 16 bullets were fired into the home of Mr. and Mrs. Robert Tucker. That same night, two girls were shot at Mr. Herman Silver living in the village. They also were shot at Mr. Joe McDonald's house that same night. Now, the question I read is this America? The land of the free and the home of the brave, where people are being murdered, lynched, and killed because we want to register and vote. When my family and I decided to move back in Sunflower County in December, the car that we had been paying on for the last three years, it was taken. We didn't have many things, and all of them had been stolen. But just to show you that God wants people to stand up. So we began at this address, 626 East Lafayette. Last February, my husband was arrested. Because I said, I don't believe that I've used $9,000 a while and don't have a bathtub or running water in the house. Can't you see justice in the sky? Can't you see justice in the sky? One morning about 5 o'clock, my husband got up to use the washroom. That was a knock on our door. He said, come in. That was two police. What are you doing up this time of night? Five o'clock in the morning. So you see how justice is working in Mississippi? You see, the point is about this, and you can't deny it, not even one of you here in this room, not Negro. We have prayed for a change in the state of Mississippi for years. And God made it so plain. He sent Moses down in Egypt land to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And he made it so plain here in Mississippi, the man that has the project is named Moses. to tell all of these hate groups to let those people go. You see, in the struggle, some people say that, well, she doesn't talk too good. The type of education that we get here, years to come, you won't talk too good. Thank you. 
But preachers have preached for years what he didn't believe himself. People will go different places. 
friends and say, the Negroes until the outside agitators came in were satisfied. And during that time, they left some in the booking room. 
And I began to be a slave. And I began to be a power. And I began to hear somebody say, Can't you say yes, son, nigga? And I could hear his father's voice say, Yes, I can say yes, sir. So I said, He said, I don't know you well enough. And I would hear when she would hit the floor again. And during the time they was beating this tongue, I heard her when she began to pray. And she asked God to have mercy on them. Because they didn't know what they were doing. I don't know how long this lasted. But after the while, Mrs. Hunter asked my sister. She didn't recognize me, but she passed my sister. One of her eyes looked like blood. And her mouth was full. And she was holding up by the against the back of the black safe. And then three men came to my safe. A safe highway patrol. And a cold and a plain dress man. The state highway patrol said, Where are you from? I said, Louisville, Mississippi. He said, I'm going to check that out. And it wasn't too long before he was back. And he used the curse word. And he said, You are from Louisville, all right. He said, We're going to make you wish you did. I was led out of that city. And to another city. Why they have two Negro friends. Three white men in that room. And two Negro The same highway patrolman of all the first Negro to take the black guy. It was a long level black jack, and it was loaded with something else. And they ordered me to lay down on my face on a boat bed. And the first Negro beat me. He had to beat me until the state highway patrol gave him orders to quit. Because he had already told me that if you know me, he said, you know what I'll be when I do. And he beat me, I don't know how long. And after the while, he was exhausted and I lost him. And it was a horrible experience. And the state highway patrol was told the second week of the day to die. And I asked him this time, I said, how can you cheat a human being like this? The second prisoner said, move your hand, lady. I don't want to hit you in the hand. But I was holding my hand behind on the left side to shield some of the lips because I suffered from polio when I was six years old. And this kind of beat, I know I couldn't take it. So I held my hands behind. And after the second Negro began to beat me, the same highway patrolman ordered the first Negro that had beat the seven of the feet to keep it from working on me. And I was screaming and I couldn't help but scream. And one of the white men began to beat me in my head and told me to stop screaming. And the only way that I could stop screaming was to take my hand and throw it around the city to muffle out the time. My dress worked up from this hard black jacket. And I pulled my dress down, taking my hands behind, and pulled my dress down. And one of the city police walked over and pulled my dress as high as it could. Five men in this room while I was one big woman being beat. And at no time did I attempt to do anything but scream and call on God. I don't know how long this lasted. But after a while, I must have passed out. And when I did raise my head up, the state 
state highway patrolman said, get up from there, Faxo. But I couldn't get up. I don't know how long, but I kept trying. And you know, God is always able. And after a while, I did get up. And I went back to my cell. That Tuesday when they had our trial, the same policeman that had participated in the beating was on the jury seat. And I was charged with disorderly conduct in resisting arrest. And I want to say tonight, we can no longer ignore the fact America is not the land of the free and the home of the brave. When just because people want to register and vote and be treated like human beings, chain, slime, and good money is dead today. A house divided against itself cannot stand. America is divided against itself, and without they consider us as human beings, one day America will crumble. Because God is not pleased. God is not pleased at all the murder and all the brutality and all the killing for no reason at all. God is not pleased at the Negro children in the state of Mississippi suffering from malnutrition. God is not pleased because we have to go ragged each day. God is not pleased because we have to go to the field and work from 10 to 11 hours for $3,000. Yeah. And then how can they say, in 10 years' time, we will force every Negro out of the state of Mississippi? But I want these people to take a good look at the say. And after they sent the Chinese back to Chinese, the Jews back to Jerusalem, and give the Indians their land back, and they take the myth out from which they came, the Negroes still be in the Mississippi. We don't have anything to be ashamed of here in Mississippi. And actually, we don't carry a gun because we don't have anything to hide. And you see people packing guns and is afraid for people to talk to you. He's afraid that something is going to be brought out and open in the morning. But I want the people to know in Mississippi today, the cover has been pulled back off of you. And you don't have any place to hide. And we are on our way now. We are on our way, and we won't turn around. We don't have anything to fear. I don't know the day, I don't know the night before I actually get back to Roosevelt. But all that they can destroy is the family that you meet tonight. Exaltation. But the sin is a reproach to any people. The beatitude of the Bible, the fifth chapter of Matthew said, Blessed are they that moan, for they shall be confident. We have moaned a long time in this city. And he said, The meek shall inherit the earth. And there is no race in America, there's no meeker than the Negro. We are the only race in America that has had babies sold from our breasts which was slavery time and had mothers sold from their babies. And we are the only race in America that had one man to march through a mob crew just to go to school, which was James H. Mary. We don't have anything to be ashamed of. All we have to do 
is tossed up and lights them out into the deep. You can pray until you faint, but if you don't get up and try to do something, God is not going to put it in your lap. It's very plain today some of the things that you have read in the Bible. When this man looked out and saw the number and said, these are they from every nation. Can't you see these things coming to pass today? When you see all of these students coming here to help America to be a real democracy and make democracy a reality in the state of Mississippi. Can't you see the fulfilling of God's word? He said, a city that sat on a hill cannot be here. Let, Let your light so shine, shine that men would see your good work and glorify the Father which is in heaven. He said, Blessed are ye when men shall advise you and shall prosecute you and shall say all my evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so they prosecuted the prophets which were before you. That's why I tell you tonight that you have a responsibility. And if you plan to walk in Christ's footsteps and keep his commandments, you will to look out into the deep and go to the courthouse. Not come here tonight to see what I look like, but to do something about the system here. We are not, excuse me, we are not fighting against these people because we hate them. But we are fighting these people because we love them and we are the only thing can save them now. We are fighting to save these people from their hate and from all the things that will be so bad against them. We want them to see the right way. Every night of my life that I lay down, before I go to sleep, I pray for these people that just spitefully use me. And Christ said, then me shall inherit the earth. And he said, before one tilt, one child of his word would fail. Heaven and earth would pass away, but his word would stand forever. And I believe tonight that one day in Mississippi, if I have to die for this, we shall overcome. We shall overcome means something to me tonight. We shall overcome mean as much to me tonight as amazing the grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Because if grace has saved a wretch like me, then we shall overcome. Because he said, seek and he shall find. Knock and the door will be open. Ask and it shall be given. It was a long time, but now we see. We can see, we can discern the new day. And one day the little Negro children, the little Negro boys, and the little Negro girls won't be afraid to walk down the street because of so much hate that will make a police jump on the kid. And one day, by standing up going to the courthouse to try to register and vote, that we can get people that's concerned about us. Because any time you see a Negro policeman now, you can rest assured he's a tongue.
We have prayed and we have hoped for God to bring about a change. And now the time has come for people to stand up. And it's something real, real peculiar, but still is great. There used to be a time when you would hit a Negro, a white man would hit a Negro. The others would go and hide. But there's a new day now. When you hit a Negro, you like to see a thousand there. And we, we can, can sit, sit down, down and, and wait for things, things to change. Because, because as long as they can keep their feet on our neck, they will always do. But it's time for us to stand up and be women and men. Because actually I'm tired of being called Amy. Yes. 
who is supposed to look over everything to make sure that the climate is handed out and fair Well, you know, being supposed to do that, you know, like a lot of things, it doesn't get done until they get a little push. Well, that's what I'm saying. And so, an 18-year-old high school girl, I was very started a movement against several of these, it's called Vision for the Association. It was called a hotel, a owner's chain, a supermarket chain, a supermarket chain, a bank, a bank, a bank, a bank, a bank, a bank, at the top of the hotel, so we go over there, so the sky is going to be like it. The city has got a very small city, and it's got a very big city. It is still the same. The hotel is going to be like it. So we're coming up with a city that's going to be like it. It's 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 going to be like it. And that's the name of the service that still is going to be like it. So uh, they were carrying things all night and all day. They had to do the time, they had to shout out the freedom. The people on the third floor of the club said, please. And after the day, they had to do the best job on the day. And finally, they decided to take a man to the house. They had to go back on the door. They had to go to the house. And now, we had to probably raise a little bit of sand with the kids. In, uh, in the hotel, and also probably uh, decided to let them know that it was a good idea. 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 So it's, it's, you know, in California, you know, who's going to put up the screen? Yes, it's easy with the jail. So they just put it in 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 the jail. A lot of the old times were criticized and told me. The people who told me were still alive to me. They had them themselves. They were leading people to go the other way. The situation said, well, you're going too fast. You know, kids, you shouldn't be talking. You shouldn't be singing so loud. You shouldn't be making so much noise. You shouldn't be all the other way. You have to know the truth and hate you. You know, we don't look so good. They're all messed up. The white liberals who had supported most of the action in the civil rights so far said the same thing. They said, well, you know, these children are going to do the best. They said, take it easy. We're going to get this pretty soon. But this young girl, who was in the military, and her friends said, well, we don't care if it's nice. We need jobs now. So this is the song that the... Thank you. 